Good morning. We pray that God will give you strength, healing, and peace. Invite a friend to attend our online virtual worship service every Sunday morning at 10.15 a.m. You can access our virtual worship service through YouTube. The power of giving comes from the heart, and your generosity is greatly appreciated. It will allow us to help families and individuals in need. You can give your donation, tithes, and offerings three ways. For all information regarding the conference call number and code, and for RBC, please visit our website at restorationbible.church. Well, here we are again on a first Sunday. This is the first Sunday in September, uh, the year of our Lord, 2021. And we want to give God the honor, glory, and praise in spite of all that has still been going on in this world. Even though we have to meet virtually still in a lot of instances, uh, we are excited that we still can observe the ordinances of the church. And I am here at the church and have a communion tray that we have all ready for uh, our live services. But for this virtual services, I wanted to commune with you as well. So if you have a moment in time, make sure you have a piece of bread, a cracker or something that will be representative of the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then something to drink, which is representative 
of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for your sins and mine. I'm excited to do this. I'm excited to do this even though I am in the church and I am by myself. I believe, as we say, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of him. And so as you go prepare yourself, I want to read, I haven't read uh, from this passage. Uh, Paul uh, puts pens in 1 Corinthians about the 11th chapter, 1 Corinthians 11th chapter. Give everybody time to go uh, get some communion uh, as we observe. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23 says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25 says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. I need to say that again. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if you would judge ourselves, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment and the rest I will set in order when I come. May God have a blessing to the reading, hearing of his word. This is a time we come to commune together. We come to commune with the Lord. And so I ask that you prepare yourselves at this time, examine yourself, as I said, the word says, examine yourself. Make sure you're doing this with a, a heart and a mind that's clean as pure you possibly can. If you need to get, forgive somebody, forgive them right now. Clean yourself up. If there's some sin in your life you need to repent of, repent of it right now. Repent of it right now with a, so that your heart can be clean and pure as we come today to commune with the Lord. So if you will get uh, something that represents the the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I have here a prepared communion, which is almost necessary at a time like this. Uh, so first, if you have prepared communion, get the wafer. As it says here, Jesus says here, take this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, eat. Now prepare your drink that is representative of the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus says in verse 25, 1 Corinthians 11, 25, he says, this is a cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in it in remembrance of me. Drink. There we go, communion. That simple, but that beautiful. That simplicity, but so necessary that we always are in, in remembrance of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this opportunity to come and commune with you and your son, Jesus Christ. We pray now, God, that all that we have done has been pleasing in your sight. We pray now you bless the intents of our heart at this time. We will never forget, never forget all that Jesus has done for us. We lift you up. We praise you. We sanctify. You, we ask you to sanctify all that we've done in the name of Jesus. And in his name we are praying. Amen. Amen. And amen. First, I want to give honor to God as truly a hit of my life. And 
I want to thank each and every one of you for being with us today at this virtual worship service, this ongoing virtual worship service of Restoration Bible Church here in the great, great, great city of Seattle, Washington. I thank God for again for this opportunity to stand before you. Even in the midst of all that we're going through, there is still a word from the Lord. There's still a word from the Lord. To the members of Restoration Bible Church, my wife and I send our love. And uh, to all those family members and friends, we are asking that you remain safe. Uh, don't drop your guard. Be, self, be safe during this time uh, because this pandemic is still going on and it's, it is quite well alive. So don't drop your, card on, your guard. I know that this is the um, time of uh, Labor Day weekend. And if you're watching this, uh, we're in the midst of Labor Day weekend, but we're also still in the midst of that pandemic. So wear your mask, observe some social distancing, be careful, be cautious during this time. Uh, we'll be praying for you and with you. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah the second chapter. Nehemiah the second chapter, Old Testament uh, writing, Nehemiah the second chapter, and let's go down to verse 17. Nehemiah 2 and 17. There you'll find these words as I read from the New King James Version of God's Holy Scripture. Then I said to them, you see this distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we no longer be a reproach. Then verse 18 says, and I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good on, upon me, and also of the king's word that he had spoke to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing of his word. I like to entitle this message, and I know the members of Restoration Bible Church are gonna like this title. I like to entitle this message, The Church Will Need Restoration. The Church Will Need Restoration restoration. Somebody say that with me. The church will need restoration. Because of the serious threat of the COVID virus and the real pandemic, we and many churches and their congregations have been sitting more or less in a cocoon condition, waiting to come out and fly. We've just been there uh, waiting to come out and, and, and spread our wings during this time. I was recently doing some driving around, and as I looked at many churches I ran across, I realized it has become easy for many congregations to overlook the ongoing need for attention to their church facilities. Now, I ain't pointing my finger at anybody, but I'm seeing churches with grass uncut, uncut uh, paint is peeling, unlit crosses on the building, old cars being abandoned in the church's parking lots, and just this feeling of emptiness surrounding the church buildings. You see, the captivity of the virus has caused many of us to forget and ignore the house that God gave us to worship in. And as the end of this pandemic is nearing, the thought came into my mind the church will need restoration. The church will need restoration. You see, I know God's church has never closed. I'm sure about it. I'm certain about that. God's church has never closed, but I am certain it will need restoration post-pandemic. You see, the writer Nehemiah, he's a captive. He's a Jewish captive and and he also had the assignment of being the cup bearer for King Artaxerxes. And he was inspired by God. Uh, Nehemiah was inspired by God to go back and take a look at the city of Jerusalem. He had heard a conversation and he had asked some questions about the city and God inspired him, Nehemiah, to go back and take a look at Jerusalem. Well, you see in about 586, I believe it was 586 BC, the walls of Jerusalem had been burned down by the Babylonians. And as God promised, many of the Jewish people, because of their religious, their religious rebellion against God and, and, and a rebellion against his laws, they were taken into captivity. 
Now, after nearly 70 years, the Jews were allowed to return to their homeland of Jerusalem, homeland of Israel. Some went and others stayed where they were. Well, when Nehemiah went to view Jerusalem, he discovered what he had heard was true, that the walls of Jerusalem were down. The captive Jewish people that had been allowed to return to their ancestral homes went back to building their own homes and own houses. And the city of David, Jerusalem, was left unprotected. The walls were down. I need to, need to say this. Often our walls are down and we don't even know it. We don't even recognize when our walls are down because we are being so busy doing our own thing. You see, Nehemiah says in a meeting with the Jewish people of Jerusalem, it's time the walls of the city go through a restoration. I think not only our church, but most churches and their congregations have this, this great dynamic opportunity now to analyze our churches and how we can come out better than we were when we went in, when we come out of this hybrid time of hibernation. Uh, we have the challenge now to be better. I think God has given us this divine opportunity to clean up some stuff and, and, and straighten out some behavior that has caused the church walls to be down, to be burned, to be down. You see, we have this great, great opportunity where we can revamp, redesign, reinvigorate programs and do a restoration of ministries. We can reassign people to positions they will prosper in and not just hold the titles to. We do have this great ability, this great opportunity now to allow our churches to go through restoration. I was reading a book recently by Thomas Rainer, Tom Rainer, and in this book entitled The Post-Quarantine Church, Rainer says, yes, there have been some challenges, but at the same time, amazing opportunities are unfolding. Amazing opportunities are unfolding. Think about all that you can do inside of your church now. Things that, that we, we've been doing we shouldn't be doing. Traditional things. We don't know why we traditionally have done this. We now can step out and, and take out some of those things that have been causing fat to come on the church, things that have been tearing down our walls. We have a great, great opportunity at this time. I want to tell you just my opinion, just really three walls in the church, I think will need respiration post quarantine. People, prayer, and purpose. People, prayer, and purpose. Turn with me, if you stay with me, in Nehemiah, the second chapter, verse 17. If you can start at verse 17, Nehemiah says to the people, he says here, he says here, you see the stress that we are in, how Jerusalem, how, how, how your church, Restoration Bible Church, other churches, how Jerusalem lay in waste and its gates are burnt with fire. What he's saying is, look, 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 come see. Don't just take my work. Come see. Stop doing what you're doing. Come see. There is restoration work we need to do at the church. You see, pastors and leaders will have to move. We have to move our people out of their hibernation. You see, they need restoration. Tell them to come look. Let them know we need each and every member of our churches for this process for this restoration process. We need you, come see. Nehemiah goes on to say, come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. You see, I'm saying this, all, our churches are gonna need all hands on deck now. Whatever your ministry is, it's time to get those biblical walls of your ministry back up as people of God. Do the God-given assignment. 
do it now that the that 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 the kingdom will be glorified. God will be your church. You, you know the world is driving by, seeing the things that I've seen and you've seen the the condition and the exterior condition of our building, wondering what churches are going to do. Now is the time we need the people to help restore this, put it back in office. Pastors cannot do this alone. We will need the people. We have to do some restoration. Each and every one of us has the responsibility to join in. So one of the walls we must be re restore is people. Then prayer. If you look back in Nehemiah 1 and 4, when Nehemiah heard about the condition of Jerusalem, he wept and went into fasting and prayer. Somebody say that with me, prayer. But then he writes in verse 5, I think through 11, a powerful, powerful prayer right there in the Bible. If you look at me in Nehemiah 1 and 5, he says there, he says there, Oh, I pray, Lord of God of heaven, oh, great and awesome God, you keep your covenant and mercy with those who love and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive to the eye, to your eye and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer, your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night for the children of Israel, your servants and confess their sins, the children of Israel, which you have sinned, which have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. Verse seven says, and we have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances, which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, he goes on to say, Nehemiah, he, he's praying now. He remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are faithful, I will scatter you among nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the furthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Verse 10 goes on to say, this is a prayer now. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, I pray, Nehemiah says, O oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day. I pray and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah is going to the king and asks for permission to go back to Jerusalem here in chapter one. He's looking for favor, but he is praying. He is praying. And you see, I think because of this prayer, you see, Nehemiah, was able to tell the people of Jerusalem. He was able to tell them about the good hand of God, which was upon him, as it says in verse 18. The good hand of God was upon him and also the king's word that he had spoken to him. You see, Nehemiah had prayed and, and, and God had heard his prayer. And that prayer also caused God to, to, to inspire, trouble, or, or convict the heart of the king to allow Nehemiah to go back and start this restoration process of the walls of Jerusalem. Prayer must be the focus point in restoration. While we have been home, if we are honest, while we have been at home, we have not been praying as much as we used to. As the church rises out of the ashes of this devastating disaster, 
We have to restore the protective and provisional walls of prayer. Because if we do that, if we are in prayer, God will provide all of our needs according to his riches in glory. In our restoration process, we must be serious and build up the walls of prayer into the church. Finally, as I get ready to go to my seat, Part B of verse 18, Nehemiah 2 and 18 indicates that the people said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. You see, I understand that they used some old bricks. There were some old bricks that still work just fine. There are some old things inside of the church that will work still just fine. But I submit to you that they brought in some new ones. And that's what I'm saying to somebody right now. In this restoration process, we're going to have to bring in the old with the new. Let our restoration process make the church better, stronger, and more inviting. Over the last 18 plus months, we have cleaned out and restored our homes, got rid of some stuff that we didn't need no more, got rid of some things that were slowing us down, got rid of some clothes we could no longer wear. Now, I said, now let's get to the restoration of the church. I submit the primary purpose for the people and prayer in the church in this restoration process is a primary purpose is going to be that we do a restoration of the loss, a restoration of the unsaved, and a restoration even of the backslider into a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So let's get back to Romans 12 and 2. Like it said, be not be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to prove that good and perfect will of God. Somebody needs to hear this today. We have to get back to our primary purpose. That's going to take people that are restored. That's going to take prayer that is restored. And then a restored purpose to let somebody know about Jesus Christ. If you have not decided, if you are still in a messed up condition and you have not have decided that Jesus Christ is going to be your Lord and Savior. I need to tell you right now, you need to go through a restoration process. You need to make up your mind that Jesus Christ is going to be your Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for your sins and mine. He was buried for your sins and mine. He rose on the third day morning with all power and that's the power that can restore you into a right relationship with God our Father. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen, amen, and amen. I pray that message helps somebody. If you're not saved, is it time that you go through a restoration? Even if you know you're saved, but you're in a backslidden condition, is it time that you go through a restoration? May God love you. God keep you. And again, I say to each and every one of you, be safe during this time. God loves you and I love you too. We send in our prayers to each and every one of you. God bless you. Somebody say amen, amen, and amen. A few reminders before you go. Giving generously helps us help others in need. And we have three ways you can give. If you would like to bless our pastors with a pastoral donation or love gift, you can send it through their cash app.
for the conference call number and code, or for more information about RBC, please visit our website at restorationbible.church. God bless, be safe, and we will see you soon.